Hello, world. I'm me. You know that because you're on my channel. It's Jeff Kavanaugh alongside the great John Owning of the Dallas Morning News. And uh, John, is there any other place we need to plug or just the Dallas Morning News? Are you just, just the Dallas Morning News. And Twitter at John Owning. Yes, and John sir. Does, John does go with an H. Unlike like the great John Mashoda, the great John Owning goes with, uh, he does use the H. Because we're not lazy. We're not lazy over here with the H. I call the H the standard spelling. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing on uh, on the on the YouTube uh, top tens of each position group, but since John Owning is considered Edge God, that's what people call him in the draft community is Edge God. I thought I would bring him in to give his top ten edges, and then later on I could correct that list. And by correct it, I mean <laughs> I'll probably be wrong, but have a differing opinion. And so now, do I need to make when I make the thumbnail? Do I have to put your top edge guy as the picture? Yes, always, especially this top edge guy. Damn it! Because I'd already made I'd already made a thumbnail for this, and it it's it wasn't fine. it wasn't your no no. <laughs> I respect for your time. I will create a thingy thing of Jalen Phillips. Oh geez. So take me take me through the top ten and a brief thumbnail and where you would pick the top ten edge guys. You want to go ten to one or one to ten? Oh, dude, I like where your head's at. Go ten to one. All right. Well, well, yeah, that's fun. We'll get the we'll get the bad players out of the way, starting with Gregory Rousseau from Miami. Well, that's not a bad player. He's a tenth edge. That's pretty yeah. good. I think he's my tenth yeah. edge too, because I've only seen like twelve. But exactly, yeah, that's my... that's exactly what it is. He's the tenth of the ten edges I've seen. He's just <laughs> such a fantastic player. But you can, you know, with him, you could see the potential in him. He has like a lot of the physical traits. He has obviously the length. He has the flexibility. He has the uh, the burst. But he's just so rudimentary and raw in his hand technique and footwork. You don't see him, especially on the edge. He doesn't really know what he's doing. He, he flashes really some ability. Edge, right? What? Like, that's the weird thing. He doesn't win on the edge. No, We're talking he doesn't. about he, pass rushers, and he wins from D tackle. And when he's winning inside, it's not like he's, like, breaking down these offensive guards and, like, nailing really good pass rush moves with good footwork. He's kind of like running around him, using his lateral quickness to beat these slower footed guards. So even his wins inside aren't that impressive. I forget now what game it was, but his three sack game was probably the worst three sack performance I've ever seen in a prospect. It was, it was nuts. You he's know, just, he's just the, so any, he, he, I've never seen somebody have so much production, but be so unimpactful from like a play to play basis. That's pretty, pretty amazing to me. So it's not his fault that people are calling him like a first round player and mocking mm -hmm. him super duper high. And so I feel bad for him kind of, and I've never met him because you know we're destroying a guy because of where other people ranked him he'd be great if you picked yeah. him in the third or fourth round and you're like dude we think we can turn this guy into something but the talk about <laughs> the first round is just creeping me out yeah exactly i totally agree so and then moving to number nine is uh his would have been his teammate this year if he was able to stay is quincy roche from uh, miami he's a guy who i really like his hand technique he has ability to sequence moves he has a really good cross chop really good double swipe uses those really well but the thing that really bothered me is, is he's he's small. He's kind of 6'2", 243, and then he doesn't have really overwhelming power. He doesn't really have the speed or burst to really stress uh, offensive tackles pass sets up the arc. So he's really only a technique guy with really modest physical traits. And that's the type of thing that I wouldn't take into like the middle round, the third round area, because that hand technique is obviously going to do good, and he's going to do well against – the uh, lesser offensive tackles in the league. When he gets a backup, he'll be able to do well in those type of situations. But he just doesn't have the ability, I think, to really stress the higher end offensive tackles. And just having, you know, above average hand technique is not going to get it done against those guys. So I don't think he has as high of a ceiling as a lot in this class, but I do think he has a higher floor just because of how good his hand technique and stuff is. So and to then, the Miami Hurricane fans, congratulations. You are either twice in the top 10 already or you are the two last <laughs> out of what John has seen so far. Oh, don't worry. They'll, they'll come back. They'll, they'll come back around by the end of this. They'll uh -huh. come back around. Yeah. And then uh, moving on to number eight, I believe that's where we are, is my man Carlos Basham from Wake Forest. Hater. <laughs> Hater. The thing is, I, I, there's some things I like about him. He, he's big. He's strong against the run. He he plays in an interesting system at Wake Forest because they play. I went to a clinic with their defensive coordinator earlier this year, virtually, and he runs a he calls it a get reach scheme. So against wide zone, you'll see uh, Basham dart into the B gap a lot when he's aligning in the C gap, and that's a way to create vertical 
penetration from the defensive line. So that's a little bit interesting. And I'm wondering how his gap integrity is going to translate to an NFL to a team that makes him stay set strong edges in that C gap. He's shown the ability to do it, but he just didn't do it a ton because of the scheme and weight force. So that's a little bit of the thing. And which interesting is, is he, he works a lot of finesse moves despite his, his density and despite how strong he is and all of that. So it really interesting how he uses like that, that club arm over move, especially on the inside. He uses it to win inside a lot, but he doesn't have a ton of high side wins. So I think he's going to be somebody who's kind of a base end who you're going to reduce down and nickel to three technique to try to give you some of that vertical penetration ability and to be able to win uh, inside high side or low side is a lot easier from the guard position or from the defensive tackle position. So I think you're going to see him kind of have that kind of role. And I liked him in that kind of role. I think he's more of a hot, like a, a top of the third round type of prospect. He was really on the border between a second and a third round grade for me, kind of. And we're then playing the rest up. of this. We're playing the rest of this video under protest, as because <laughs> that's as your a guy. Basham, as a Basham fan account, we are. We, I just want everybody to know that we're under protest. As soon as someone tells him that you own both arms and hands, we're going to turn him into a really good player. It's going to be great. And, You're going to love it. And his pad level on his power rushes really blunts a lot of the power that he has at the point of attack. If he can learn to get a little bit lower as he in his entrance to those bull rushes, I think it'll allow him to create a lot more pop at the point of contact and allow his speed the power to really blossom in the NFL but just little things like that and I think he'll be able to become a really good effective contributor in the NFL and then a guy that I was surprised how much I liked coming into it, I thought I wasn't going to be that big of a fan is Joe Tyron from Washington I first watched the USC game tape and it was kind of eh, you know he wasn't really doing super good and then after that I watched the Oregon and Utah games and I was really much more impressed with his ability to uh, threaten people vertically. I thought his burst was really impressive especially against Oregon and Utah. That's something he didn't really show against USC. And the ability to stress those offensive tackles and open up inside counters is something he really did really well. He plays really hard. His hands are kind of all over the place. He's not really refined. He's kind of like a bull in a china shop just swinging his arms in certain situations. But I just love with a tenacity that he plays he builds up momentum into his speed to power rushes he's really rangy against the run so he's somebody who i thought again at the top of that third round area who's someone who i would like if the cowboys you know they were in that middle round and they still wanted to grab an edge defender he's a guy who i think at six foot five 262 really fits the bill of what the cowboys would need in a defensive end in those you know middle rounds and i, th I think that for a lot of people who aren't focused on edge i'm not sure why like you have, you got Tank and you got Gregory, but outside of that, to think that Anai or Armstrong would stop you from picking an edge yeah. in the first few rounds, I just, let's get to know these edge rushers. Let's get to know them. I mean, we've seen in the past two drafts how effective a really good pass rush could be when you can go three, four deep on the edge with really effective pass rushers. And I think the Cowboys should take that. I think you should draft pass rushers almost every year you can never have too many the ability to put pressure on opposing quarterbacks is really important in today's NFL and if you get pressure on them quickly that's really difficult so I I'm always going to be for drafting edge rushers every number year number six number six is Mr. Jason Oway from Penn State the athletic phenom I mean no sex he's, he's so no funny sex. he's so funny to watch because you see the athleticism but it's against the run which is weirdly enough it doesn't really he doesn't really let it blossom when he's a pass rusher but against the run you see he does some crazy things where he'll be playing speed option and he'll take the QB and the running back at the same time he'll be guarding the QB and then when he pitches it to the running back he'll go and chase the running back and you just see crazy plays like that against the run littered throughout his film but as a pass rusher, he's really, really raw right now. He doesn't really know how to use his hands. He doesn't really have any developed footwork to manipulate offensive tackles. And that's what that's why where, despite his great athletic traits, and I think that he has – if he refines his pass rush ability, he could be one of the higher-end uh, edge rushers in this class, but he's just not there. I'm not sure he's going to give you any pass rush really production early, but against the run, he's going to be someone who could do a lot of work. And those no zero sense. sacks are – <laughs> I'm not a box score <laughs> so guy, wild. but even so zero wild. sacks is insane. I mean, Ledger, John Ledger had a good Twitter thread the other day talking about how there – I don't think there's ever been an edge rusher who's become a really contributing level player who had zero sacks in their last game and played at least seven games. It's why you trust the tape. I mean, my guy at Missouri, Tyree Gillespie, I, like, I think he's a decent safety prospect. No picks. Sometimes <laughs> weird stuff happens. You can't yep. worry about it. 
Exactly. And then moving on to number five, give, give some Texas flavor, Joseph Osai. You know, if you, if you watch him against Tevin Jenkins, it's kind of a bit of a struggle, but against really everybody else, he, he performed well. I think he has the speed up the arc. I think he has a really good long arm speed, the power move. He does a good job feeling inside counters. He's active against the run. He's kind of, he's not as good as Owe against the run, but he does kind of similar things, how he's active, rangy, making plays outside of his gap. He's making, he's stacking C gap, shedding, making plays in a secondary gap in the B gap. He's a guy who I, who I was really impressed with. And I think second round, he's a guy who can give you a lot of pass rush ability early and even provide some disruptiveness against the run. I think he would be a great, you know, rotational piece early on in his career for a team like the Cowboys on the edge. And he plays super hard. Oh incredibly like, hard he does so much of his stuff is just because he does not mm -hmm. stop that was one of the most impressive things is he was getting his butt kicked against tevin jenkins the entire game and then he last play of the game, game yep last play of the game he finishes it with that speed rush off the edge so he never you know he never got down on himself he got pancaked at least three or four times but he just kept coming he was not afraid he has zero i don't know if you can cuss he has zero b word in his game yeah you know, i wonder good. He must have, because I had Texas fans mad at me when I was like, Tevin Jenkins kind of gave him the business, and people were like, he had three sacks in an awesome game. And I was like, well, he didn't do that against the right tackle. That's all <laughs> nope. I'm telling you. The right yeah, tackle, exactly. he must have done a nice job when he flipped. And then number, uh, what are we on, number four? Four, yeah, number four. and you're going to offend Longhorn Nation, I bet, if you have a certain guy ahead of a certain guy. Yeah, oh, uh, that's the next one. I'm going to get to that. Number four is uh, Quiddy Pay. Edge, Michigan, Mr. Sub 653 Cone. Uh, you see the freaky, the freakiness. You know, he has out of everybody, I say he shows the most athletic traits on a play-to-play -play basis, most against the pass and the run. You just see the speed, you see the ability to generate momentum, the explosiveness out off the gate. But like Owe, he's super duper raw. He doesn't know a lot of what he's doing, and he rushes the contact way too much. He kind of gets belly to belly with offensive tackles a lot. And despite his size and despite his ability, his ability to generate momentum and all of that, he's not a great power rusher because sometimes his pad level rises a little bit too early, right when he's coming into his pat into his bull rushes. So it kind of blunts his power at the point of attack. But when he starts using those finesse moves, he starts using double swipes, he starts doing cross chops, you really see the potential to be an elite pass rusher in the NFL because those freaky, freaky, freaky athletic traits. And I think if you can just harness his hand technique, especially get him to develop that and use more finesse and stop working speed to power so much, I think he's someone who can become a really effective pass rusher in the NFL and someone who I think warrants consideration in this. In this, I know people are going to take him in the first round, but personally, right. I think he's someone who I, I would take in the second round-ish area. I'm a little bit of a harder grader on these edge prospects. I love that you mentioned the side to side because mm -hmm. he was one of the guys that sometimes you'll know the backstory on a guy before you watch him. And sometimes you won't mm -hmm. Quiddy pay. I did not know his backstory. And in my notes, multiple times, I was like, he's a run. Like he, he runs like a running back. He has, and he's duck footed. Like, oh, if he you notice he's back. duck footed. He has his, <laughs> when he walks around, his feet are like this. And it's like, so he kind of like, it's chops. short and choppy, like uh -huh. a running back looking for a hole. And I'm just watching him. I'm like, Jesus, he's a 270 something pound running back. Um, but yeah, it's just Super the way freaky. he moves is different. It's different. Mm -hmm. And then number three guy who coming in, I wasn't sure I was going to like about, I didn't watch a ton of, but I really fell in love with watching his tape. And it might've been because one of the first plays I watched was him long arming Tevin Jenkins through his soul. But, Some guy named Bob on Twitter got real mad at me for posting that because I was just watching, I was studying uh, mm -hmm. Jenkins and I saw that play and I was like, oh, that's nice for Ronnie Perkins. And so I sent it out and Bob was like, this is not representative of these players. I'm like, oh yeah, if, if that's what you thought I was saying, anyone, that's not what I'm saying. It was just a nice play for Ronnie Perkins. But yeah, Ronnie Perkins from uh, Oklahoma really I was super impressed with his ability to convert speed to power despite being sub 250 listed. I mean, his, uh, he does it perfectly. He knows how to threaten with speed to get the offense tackle start moving backwards. And then he'll convert that speed to power with that long arm rush the way he can win high side or low side. He also has a good two to one that he converts into a long arm. So he's just a really well-developed speed to power rusher, much more developed than you see most of these pass rushers who work a lot of speed to power in this class. And I think he has the ability to win high side with pure speed. You see the bend, you see the ability to contort his body to really uh, bend the corner at really acute angles. That's really impressive. And then gets the, against the run man, he's a maniac. He's, I think, the closest thing to Owe in his ability to 
make plays all over the place, get off blocks, you know, slant. He can penetrate. He can hold a point. He does a lot of things really well. And I really fell in love with his game. And he's someone, you know, there's always a guy every year who I have, who I'm higher on than everybody else who I give that, that, you know, that cheater one, two grade to that no one else really has that high. And Ronnie Perkins is that guy. I would take Ronnie Perkins with the Cowboys to 44th overall pick and be super happy about it. I think he's, just really an impressive player, and I think a lot of people are underrating him in this class. You think he could be a three-down player initially? Because that's the one thing in my notes about him is I just wonder, does he really hold up, or is he a pass rusher when he gets in the league? I think he could hold up because I think he plays with really good pad level, really good leverage at the point of attack. Obviously, he might have some issues against, like, you know, the big hulking offensive tackles in the NFL, obviously, but I think a lot of players have issues with with those offensive tackles, even veterans that are in the league. So, I think that he could step in and give you a uh, dual threat ability as a traditional defensive end. And I think that's important. I think we talk so much about pass rush specialists, but the problem about being a pass rush specialist is you miss out on a lot of pass rush opportunities because you're not in those run downs, those first and second downs. So I think Perkins has that ability to play both down so that you can maximize his ability as a pass rusher because he gives you enough against the run immediately, in my opinion. Boomer. And then number two. One of my favorites in this class. I know he's a favorite of yours. We've kind of been in a dual love machine with him since the beginning of this draft process is <laughs> George's Aziz Ojulari. I mean, he is really interesting. I, I could see that people, I understand why some are lower on him because he really only used one move to win. He used that stab chop a lot to win, but he uses, has so many different variations that counteract what account, what the offense in the top, tackles counters might be if they try to use that snatch and trap that Tyron uses a lot he'll do a kind of th touch and then he'll pull back and hammer or he can be strong and use it as a speed to power he can use it as a finesse he can win low side he can win high side he can win through offensive tackles so despite that he only uses one move he can win in so many different ways I haven't seen that kind of depth of a single technique from a pass pressure coming out in really really a long time you usually see that from the veterans now Ojolari doesn't really have the secondary moves that complement that primary move that he still needs. And I think that's something he's going to need to work on in the NFL. But the fact that he already has one move that he can beat a lot of offensive tackles with, I mean, he had the highest pass rush win weight in this class, I believe 25% or something like that. PFF said, and then, what's his, and what's his, uh, what's his weight that you have him listed at? Uh, 245. Okay. So he's listed as a, mm -hmm. like a small guy, mm -hmm. but, but he plays I, much bigger. Yeah. So plays I saw way regularly, bigger. like he'll see a pulling guard oh, he, and that pulling guard's going to stop where they meet. 300, what was it? 350 pound Deontay Brown from Alabama. Not you scared. Stop. Didn't move it. Didn't give an inch. <laughs> you stop. Didn't give because, a damn inch. Like he's so strong and plays so mm -hmm. low where it's just like, oh, okay, well, if you're coming this way, we'll meet right here and then I'll tackle the running back. So and I think I like him a lot. Ojolari is just one of the best processors, has some of the best instincts of the edge players in this class. You see him read his blocks really well. He always understands what the offense is trying to do. So he's just a really heady player. And I, I think any team that gets him is going to be really happy, whether that's a three down team with, and he's playing as an outside linebacker, or four down team with his hand into the dirt. I really think Aziz Ojolari can do it all. I'm really, really, really impressed with his ability. And then my number one oh, guy. Man, that is a great time we had. Uh, number one was Aziz. <laughs> and we move on with our day. Who's number one, John? Mr. Jalen Phillips, the best, the, the real 15 from Miami. Um, six foot five, 265 pounds. Just a fantastic athlete. He has the ability to man uh, more than any other pass rusher in this class, he understands how to use his footwork to manipulate offensive tackles and create short corners and inside counters. I think that's something that he really separates himself from the pack with doing. And then he has a myriad of uh, hand techniques that he uses. You know, he has the long arm stab chop, inside club arm over. He has the double swipe, and they're all really well developed. He has a kind of a spin move that he needs a little bit more refinement. He has a kind of clunky coming out of there but he already has a well-developed repertoire that I think he's going to win with in the NFL. And the only thing that really gives me pause about him that is not included in my grading is obviously the durability concerns from the medical retirement, the concussions, the wrist injury, all of that stuff. But from oh, a just so pure Pat, tape perspective, factor, I think he's the best in this class. Once we factor in the injury history, he is. He's your second edge. We'll just move him <laughs> down to point one, and we'll get him. <laughs> exactly. That's probably true. I don't factor in injuries because I'm not a doctor, and I have no idea how to be able to – you know, project how this injury affects a player according to this injury. That's not my expertise, so I just kind of 
throw do, my hands up. I not my not my thing. cup of tea. But on film, Jalen Phillips is the yeah. best edge rusher in this class, and I and I think it's pretty pretty apparent in my opinion. Well, I, he's the most. I mean, to me, like the thing that I definitely give him is I think he's the most polished. Like mm-hmm. what you're talking about. Like there's a plan. There's an array of different moves he can use. Even if he's not a what would you call him for an edge? A good athlete? Like, I don't think he is the Gumby sort of going to turn this corner. Especially in this class when you've got guys like Jason Owe and yeah, Woody Pay who are like the elite of the elite athletic. Yeah, he's more linear than some of them, but mm-hmm. he knows what he's doing and where he's going. And he's like, he's, he's just, he's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So that's the top 10 edges, according to John Owning. I'll correct it later. Um, <laughs> and by correct it, I mean pretty much co sign all of it and maybe move around some guys very small amounts uh, at John owning on Twitter. I've told him to create a YouTube channel, but I don't think he's done it because that's <laughs> Not yet. John. He's just, I'm, I'm too scared. I'm too scared. Uh, okay. That's a weird, <laughs> that's a weird take, but thanks. Thanks for swinging by. I'll create a thumbnail for uh, Jalen Phillips and, and we'll party. I appreciate you for having me on Jeff. All right. Let me see. How do I stop the recording?